What up guys, it is Justice here and I'm back for another video to talk about raids. I think the last time I was hyped like this was actually only about two weeks ago with the Rune Dragons release. There is so much good content being released right now for RuneScape which is really evolving the game and to be honest almost every day I'm hyped up right now for all the good content that's coming out. So like I said this video is focused on raids, my thoughts on raids plus uh, developer Q&A footage in the background and me just spotting some other things that weren't really mentioned on the stream a few little things which I've spotted and would like to share with you Okay, so raids are based on a new alien planet called Mazcab. For any lore hounds out there, essentially Mazcab is a planet that was destroyed by Tusker, and Tusker left behind Eretz. These Eretz decided to ransack the place and make it their own by imprisoning the extraterrestrial um, life of the Gobies. So over the past three to four days, there's been a lot of people asking me on my live streams, what is a raid? And if you haven't played a game that contains one, then you're probably not going to know much information about it. So essentially, it's usually made up of a large team of players. In this situation, up to 10 players, which is the maximum, who go out and explore an environment, whether a dungeon, uh, such as God Wars Dungeon, for example, but that is not counted as a raid because you can pick and choose what parts of that dungeon you can go and fight and you can camp at one boss for a long time. Um, it could also count as a new planet. Within this area, raid is usually a linear set of activities, which is why GWD isn't counted as a uh, raid, because it's not linear. You play through a set of activities that are determined by uh, determined for you, and you have to fight through a uh, different boss fights, maybe areas filled with puzzles to finally reach the end boss fight. On the way towards the end boss fight, there may be chests along the way that give you smaller rewards. In this situation, I'm predicting potentially reputation or currency. And once your team has killed the main boss at the end, each person in that team will receive loot and have a chance of obtaining some of the rarest, most rewarding items in the game. Uh, these items are going to be, which I'll go into later, tier 90 tan karma and also different reputation to purchase other things, which again, I'm going to go into later. And well, straight away before delving into this video, it's been confirmed by Mod Avatar the release date will be early July, people. Early July, which many of us didn't expect, including myself. I thought it was going to be late August, and to be honest, they dumped all of this information raids, rune dragons, new quests, Seren spells, everything they dumped on us within like one Monday, about a month ago or so, about five weeks ago. So, you know what? All of this information is quite hard to comprehend because there's so much of it, and it's all dropping down this summer. Uh, so, it's, like I said uh, in my video about about a month ago it's going to be an epic summer uh, so moving swiftly on to the most important stuff which is the pvm info First off, I'm going to talk about boss fights, different mechanics which we might know about already, uh, the time it takes to kill them, the names of these bosses through different footage which we saw in the developer Q&A which uh, people may not have picked up on or may have may have not picked up on, and also the difficulty level of these bosses. First off, there's going to be two boss fights lasting approximately 10 minutes each, along with an area in the middle that I predict is going to be the Gobi boat ride or something. <laughs> it's like, if you look on the screen, um, option number three or four, um, it says a Gobi Gobi boat ride and they did mention in the developer Q&A that there was going to be a environment in the middle between the two boss fights that you'll have to get through in order to get to the hardest boss fight ever created on RuneScape 3. Oh by the way just a quick little thing about the mechanics which you're going to add in here. Uh, the main boss here the Beastmaster, the first boss will actually increase its enrage whilst his little minion or pets are close by so there's obviously going to be some voking mechanics within this boss fight. Similar to maybe Viraga hard mode where there's multiple scopuluses and you want to keep them apart potentially. But back to the middle section, the Gobi Boat Ride, which we think it's going to be called. That'll probably contain puzzles and potentially the opportunity to bank, but I'll get into that later on with the rewards. So essentially what will happen in a raid, there will be a bit of downtime in raids where you can usually relax, maybe rest up, uh, regenerate your health, um, or maybe just have a chat, socialize a little bit, you know, go and you know, grab a brew or something. So there's always that sort of um, middle part within raids that give you a bit of downtime. And, you know, when you're in a boss fight for up to 30 minutes, minutes uh, or when you're in an environment for up to 30 minutes with a 10 man team there's going to be times where maybe you might have to rush off and do something or take a little break to maybe communicate and think about how you're going to approach the next part of this raid. So like I said earlier, if you look carefully on the screen right now, it looks like there's some sort of checkpoint system. And it, it was confirmed on the Q&A that, let's say, once you finish the first boss fight against the Beastmaster boss, which will be the name of the first boss, by the way, which will be a, a similar difficulty level to Virago hard mode. Once you finish that boss, 
that will be checked that will be saved as a checkpoint and then you can choose to go back in at the next checkpoint if you wish to do so that way if you're in a large team you know maybe somebody a few couple of people have to go quickly somewhere you can then all save that as a checkpoint and come back to it later maybe the next day or later on within that day this is a brilliant concept which again a lot of raids do have amongst other games and uh, for example let's say on the first week of release we're still trying to get through that first boss fight and we finally master the beast master fight and we complete it but then we fail let's say on the second boss fight and then we have to start all the way from the beginning that isn't the case once you complete the first boss fight you will then be able to just keep going in at the second boss fight as many times until you master the second boss fight that's what i'm predicting anyway now you'll also notice uh, my expectations of raids originally were right we're gonna have to fight through loads of mobs just to get to a boss now when they showed us on the q a it was like you can just go straight into that you know the boss fight into the arena however they said it was going to be a lot more dynamic and they did skip ahead so potentially before we even reach the first boss the beastmaster boss or before we can even deal damage to it or as part of dealing damage to it we'll have to kill a horde of lower level monsters which is pretty exciting and then get on to killing the main boss with various mechanics tanking lots of damage then we'll uh, go to a goby boat ride by the looks of it which will be the maybe the rest point of the raid but also you've got to complete a few puzzles and things as a team maybe even find more information out about the gobies and get more lore behind the raid and then we'll move on to the second boss fight that was not that was not talked about at all on the developer Q&A but if you do look at the options I mean surely that's a massive hint and a, t and a, and a spoiler that the second boss is going to be called Yakamaru hopefully I pronounced that right and as you can see there may be two different parts of that boss fight Yakamaru maybe the basic phase and then the mirage phase now that's pretty exciting we have no idea what that means but there you go that's a spoiler for you the predictions are the second boss will be called Yakamaru that we have uh, predictions due to various screenshots and little hidden uh, spoilers within BTS videos that it's going to be in the form of a serpent. My expectations is that the raids were going to be very, very long. However, that's because I'm used to playing raids in other games, such as Destiny, which can last, let's say, 45 minutes. Uh, now, as a RuneScape, as, as a player base, we are not used to uh, a linear raid lasting for a very long time. Um, so we've got to get used to this sort of content so I can understand why they've implemented it in this way. Now, that's not saying there's not a lot of content to delve into. There are two large bosses lasting at least 10 minutes each, probably longer on release because we're trying to get used to the content, and then also a bit in the middle as well so there's still a lot of content here to delve into lots of uh, rewards which are going to change the game making tanking more prominent lots of content here still to delve into and outside of the boss fights there's still an entire planet and whole new social space a question which i'm going to pick out was asked on the developer q a um around will there be lower level raids for mid-tier pvmers and mod chrisel replied with it depends on player feedback what direction we take this in now that's a very political answer my personal opinion is that the expansion of raids should increase in difficulty and increase in rewards we have plenty of content in the game for mid-tier pvmers and also virago will eventually become mid-tier pvm rather than high level at the moment as the game evolves so raids should carry on pushing the limits and embrace what the eoc has given us which are dynamic pvm situations that we use ability rotations for and well coordinated teams to overcome the unique mechanics but mid-tier raids might help new players into the game now moving on to the very important factor of rewards now you can have a lot of fun content but if there's not a decent amount of rewards to match up to that fun content eventually it won't be repeatable content people will get bored of it because there won't be that extra incentive to keep going there and get those rewards and there won't be that rng excitement around getting some of the best rewards in the game so now moving on to rewards i'm going to explore these with you now as we all know by now, there will be tier 90 tank armor, melee, mage, and range. There will be two sets, a superior version having a set effect that will give you a high advantage within raids, and there will be a normal set. The raids armor do not degrade whilst within the raid, so you don't need to worry about losing money on repair charges. Also, it would persuade players not to use it outside of the raids, and to be honest, you don't need tank armor in many areas outside of raids at the moment except for potentially high in rage Araxor or very very lengthy solo god wars dungeon camping superior will be repairable but the normal version will degrade to dust exactly how port's armor works at the moment in the game 
Both armors are untradeable, which makes me think there will be other incentives to repeatably do the raids, not just for the best armors in the game. And those who are very lucky and get the tier 90 sets early on will need an incentive to go back, not just for the fun aspect. There will also be currency and reputation, potentially a store to purchase items from, maybe the first tier of the tier 90 armor, plus new abilities that will be coming into the game, beginning with range and magic basics to fill the gaps, and other potential farmable loot. Now, we have no idea what that could be, but it'd be pretty cool maybe for some Hydrixes. Yeah, Hydrix buff anytime soon, Jagex. Now, rewards can only be obtained once every two days, however you can do the boss as many times as you want. We don't know whether it'll just be a random loot that drops for example, a melee tier 90 helm maybe, and then your next drop could be with RNG, might be a magic tier 90 top. If it's like this, then expect it to take a very long time to get your first full set of one class. My opinion on this mechanic of how rewards are going to work, I really don't mind only having a chance at tier 90 gear once every two days. Due to being used to playing raids in other games such as Destiny where you can only receive loot from raids once a week, however those raids are longer so I guess it's balanced. It makes it more of a challenge, increases the life cycle of the content and it allows those players who can't play the game all day a more equal chance of competing with those players who can play the game longer, which is probably better for the community. So they haven't gone into great depths of how this two day mechanic is going to work but I'm pretty certain they, they confirmed that there's only a chance of receiving the superior tier 90 loot once every two days. Now whether that means um, outside of that two day period whilst you're doing the raids uh, more than once you can still get a chance of receiving reputation, currency and maybe farmable loot but the two day mechanic only influences your RNG chance of receiving superior tier 90 version of the of the armor pieces. Now that could be a good way to implement it and that way uh, the multiple times you do it you're still making consistent money per hour out of doing raids. Uh, but I'm really not sure how they're going to implement rewards as a whole but we know there's going to be a two day mechanic within it. Now overall my opinions is that it's a new piece of content, the start of something new and something to build on. There will be more bosses being added in the future, not on release date, no ETA has been given. There will also be weapons added in the future, not on release date, again no ETA given. And to be honest, right now I don't think we needed new weapons as we have enough DPS as there is. I feel making tanking more prominent within raids is a brilliant choice and also on the Q&A a question asked by myself got answered. Will using shields play a more prominent uh, part within raids? If so, how? And this was answered with a strong yes from Mod Cressel. Unlike, unlike existing boss fights uh, within the game, such as Virago, where there are areas you can stand and just not take any damage, the majority of those people will be DPSs, and then there's just two prominent tank rolls. In these new boss fights, there will be constantly um, there will be constant area attacks that afflict damage upon everybody more frequently within that team. I also predict there will be times where as a team we'll not be able to inflict much damage at all onto the boss and instead use mechanics against the monsters whilst tanking a lot of damage. Uh, this will be similar to maybe next attacks but more powerful. So we can we can predict at least with the first boss there's going to be a mixture between next mechanics and Virago hard mode mechanics. Another question that was asked and answered was how loot is going to be determined. So for example in a 10 man team everybody will get their own individual chance of receiving unique loot. It works similar to Rise of the Six where each of you get to loot the chest. It's not determined by DPS or damage taken and in my opinion this promotes more of a team effort. So for example when eventually my team can do the raid with it with 8 people rather than 10 I'll then be able to get 2 viewers involved and they will have a chance at learning the mechanics, experiencing the environment and also having their own chance at receiving loot. Also to note if you do go with an 8 man team just to clear it up you will not receive loot for 10 people. Like I said there will probably be a chest and each person can loot that chest once every 2 days. Uh, another question that I got answered is how mysterious relics which we're currently gathering right now through experience each day we can gather up to two relics a day how are those going to influence raids because there's always been rumors around them well to confirm it mysterious relics will be used to allow you to bank between bosses and potentially enhance your rewards my prediction is that you'll be able to convert these relics into reputation and use this rep to purchase mobile banking uh, in between the boss fights maybe whilst on the Gobi boat ride section or just hand in that for reputation that will get you closer to purchasing the first tier of the tier 90 armor set and finally final boss and comp rex yes i'm going to lose my final boss title and yes people are going to lose that lose their completionist cape uh, capes uh, you'll have to unlock songs but the second song isn't unlocked until later in the in the fight but to be honest you're going to have to unlock the reaper title anyway which means you're going to have to kill each of the boss bosses once and yeah, I will be aiming to kill each of the bosses 100 times each to get my final boss title back.
Uh, the best way to prep for these raids, I would say a Virago hard mode 10 man teams, and I'll link more information about raids in the description below. Thank you so much for listening, hopefully you found this useful and found out a bit more information which you didn't know. And again, this is the sort of video that really sparks a debate, so please, I do strongly encourage you to write all of your opinions and thoughts down below about these raids, and I will try my best to reply to as many as possible. And any other information that I may have missed here, feel free to write that in the comment section as well. Thank you so much for listening. I will be live streaming all of this on release date and there on forward. So yeah, I am so psyched for this. I can't wait to share this content with you via Twitch and YouTube. Feel free to rate, comment and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video or live stream. Take care. Good luck on your PVM trips and happy scaping.